exactly. Let me get the yeah, get, get a little, get a little situated. Yeah. Ooh, you feel good? Oh, I feel fantastic. Yeah, so good. Lean back. Just lean back. Get my Settle in. Exactly. We're all here together. Here we go. I don't know if you noticed, but we share a name sort of in the, like, you know, it's, it's yes, a, yeah, the I badass. I was like, ooh, this is my conference. Right? It's basically, yes. basically for you. <laughs> so I don't follow a lot of people online that, you know, continuously. And um, someone told me about you a couple years ago, and I started following you. And one of the things that I noticed that you have one of the most authentic, you know, personas and connect, you can almost like connect with you online, which for me, like rarely does not happen. I mean, except for, there's some exceptions, Queen Latifah, um, Lena Waithe now, but um, yeah, Lena's dope too. Yeah, but there's very few people. How the hell do you do that? Ooh, uh, well, I have no barriers really. You know? You don't like boundaries. No, I yeah, don't. You just... I'm team TMI all the time. <laughs> you know you came to the right place. You yeah, came to the right I'm place. like, if you can't handle my TMI, then we shouldn't be friends, you know? So I feel like when I'm, you know, anywhere, in any space, in the office, on social media, wherever it is, I'm just going to show up in all of this. In all this. And if you don't like it, then you don't like it. Let me bring it. <laughs> we like it. We like it. Right? <laughs> So you've worked at a few places, um, small, small companies like Apple and right. yeah, I'm sure many of you don't know, um, on brand, pop culture. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes things go wrong with, uh, with culture and companies. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about um, you know, any of the situations you've worked on uh, on the branding side <laughs> when something's gone wrong? <laughs> Well, <laughs> you said TMI, so Listen, we're, uh... Well, let me just put it this way. I haven't been there when things have gone wrong. It could you know be secondhand. <laughs> That's real. That's real. Because uh, clearly, I'm amazing, so... Uh, but I have certainly been there before and after, because, you know, folks know who to call. <laughs> so. So, so, I, so I have to ask, um, what was it like working with Dre on Beats? Oh, right. Well, you know, I know it was a while. Yeah. yeah. No, you know what's amazing is that, um, well, I think most people who know of Dr. Dre know that he's a perfectionist. You know, there's nothing that he's going to do which is going to come out quickly. Hence, folks have been waiting for an album for some time, or were. <laughs> Um, and We're so still ready. Just, you, know what, you know what that experience taught me, though, was that things shouldn't be rushed. You know, just because you or some, or actually the external world, somebody else is looking for something from you. If you're not ready, then you don't deliver. Right. And that's a, that's a hard thing to do, you know, when you've got a lot of pressure. Persistence. Yeah. Gotta rock it out. So now you're at Uber. Yes. <laughs> They're my people. And I have to say, <laughs> um, there's been a few things at Uber, obviously. But, um, it's been interesting, since you've been at Uber, mm -hmm. um, our people at Lesbians Tech who also work at Uber, you know, they've been telling me that this is actually a really great place to work right now. And I'm just gonna give you all of that credit. I'm just gonna go I'm ahead and gonna, give you- And I'm gonna take I'm it. I'm gonna give you all that credit, but, <laughs> no, but real, real talk, what has been, what is it like sort of stepping in, right? I mean, they hired you to solve a problem, mm -hmm. right? That's real, they, they hired you to solve a very particular problem. What has been the hardest part of that, that transition? Man, well, so I joined in June. Um, that was a week before Travis Kalanick resigned. Uh, and among, you know, amongst many other issues and challenges was just uncertainty. You know, I think it's very hard to operate when the ground keeps shifting. Right. You know, especially if you're trying to build something that can last the test of time. You know, I mean, we're all of us in this room, and for most people, uh, we want to do the right thing. You know, we want to be good citizens in our communities, we want to be good citizens in our offices, um, but that's hard to do if things are shifting all the time. You don't know where solid ground is. And so that's probably the most difficult thing, you know? But for me, my center of gravity is constant. You know, it's like, even if something shifts, I still find a way to stand up straight, and so I really, I mean, I've said it before that I absolutely count on my gut. You know, tell me every time when something is good or bad. <laughs> right. 
you know? So for me, that's, that's probably been the hardest thing is the shifting sands, but things are stabilizing. Tell me, tell me about your team. Tell me about other people that work there. How has it been watching them, right? Because they were there before you got there. How has it been for them as this sort of shifting landscape and the transition has been happening? Yeah, you know what's interesting is that I, I find this probably, and maybe some people find this shocking, that there's 17,000 people who work at Uber, not drivers, like people who work yep. at the company. Um, and so you can imagine that all of those people are working hard every day, you know? vast majority of them are really passionate, who want to change the future, you know, who want to make things good in the general sense of the word. And so, you know, for me, the, the people who are there are the passionate people. They're the visionaries or the risk takers or the people who want to just change shit, you know, make it great. And so I'm really inspired, you know, by the people that I see. And, and quite frankly, I've answered the question before about, you know, what is it that I want at the end of this? You know, and I want those people who are working so hard every day, who are breaking doors down, who are changing, you know, the way that we operate in the world, uh, to be proud of their work, you know, and not to be shamed of it. Because it's really, there is no shame in doing your work well. So can we change that? Right. So speaking of brands, um, Silicon Valley doesn't have right now when it comes to representation. Uh-oh, uh, I think you're going in and out, girl. Can you hear yeah. me now? now? Speaking of Silicon Valley, are we good? Can you hear me? No. I can hear myself, that's so weird. <laughs> it's because I'm so we're overwhelming, you know what I mean? You know, it's, it's true. Your power is, <laughs> you gotta like, no, just kidding, I gotta do that. <laughs> She got my joke right there. No, she that was joke. the C and yeah. the yeah. and Sarah thing. You know what I mean? We got to yeah. like... Stand. No, I know. It's hard. It's hard. I mean, with all of... They started it. It's a lot of energy. I mean, people... There's no seats. <laughs> just trying to get in. Um, I said, speaking of brands, Silicon Valley doesn't have the best brand right now when it comes to representation, mm -hmm. um, when it comes to things like sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. What do you think... I mean, you're obviously such a skilled person at changing the conversation. Um, what do you think is going to make that happen for Silicon Valley? Well, first of all, we've got to get pretty tough. We've got to get tough. How tough? Very tough. <laughs> like the emoji like this tough. And then the emoji like that tough. You know what I'm right, saying? Yeah, no, I can see the emojis now. I can see yeah, it. I can see them. Yeah, like that. And then if it doesn't, you know, if people aren't moving fast and you do the emoji with the line across the mouth, like the blah, 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 that one, <laughs> you know? Because for me, this, there is no excuse. There's no excuse. It's like, we're way past that. You know? And so it, it takes us, you know, making the noise and pushing and never taking the no to change it. Girl, you want to come up here so I can see you? Because I can't see you. I'm like, where's she at? I can't see you. I would like to see your face. <laughs> that was not a threat. Why y'all saying, ooh, I'm not doing anything. You see me doing anything in these heels? You I can't know, do anything to her. There was, yeah. I'm not, I'm not that threatening, you know what I'm saying? Oh my gosh. So one of the things we talk a lot about is urgency. Yeah. Right? So what do you think, right? Because we, there's press, right? I mean, the press has been holding tech companies accountable. Mm -hmm. But what do you think, let's say for example, if you were president, CEO, mm -hmm. what would be an ac executive action you would take to solve the issues in technology? Well, I mean, like we're just talking about with diversity and the need to get tough with it. You know, we need to make sure that it's part of the responsibilities of how people are even compensated. Right. You know, if we, we know that's true. I mean, it's like if you hit somebody in their pocket, it will change things. You know, that if we are lining up all of the metrics that it takes for senior executives, to be able to hit their bonuses, let's add diversity to that number. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You've said in the past, I wasn't hired because I was black. I was hired because I was the best person for the job. Mm -hmm. What's happened in your career that you've had to clarify that point? What's happened in my life that I've had to clarify that point? Right. I mean, you know, I have, to, I have to make that clear every time I step outside my house. 
I have to make that clear when I'm at the grocery store. At the grocery store? Girl, everywhere. Grocery store do you go to? <laughs> Anyone. I mean, just, okay. No, but it's them. true. Yep. It's like, you know, you have to make that point clear because what happens is it becomes disrespectful. You know, if you say, well, you know what? She was hired because she was black. Well, what happened to my receipts? You know? And I also find it so ironic, because it's like, oh, well, you know, we can't find black people, or we can't find women, or we can't find yeah, any, standard. yeah, we can't yeah. find anybody to do the job. But then all of a sudden, it's we like, do. oh, I appear, and then it's like, oh, well, she only got it because she was black. What? <laughs> it's like, you know, I can't, it's like, I can't win, you know? And so for me, I always, I always correct people. I always do. Like, I don't, I don't let anybody get a pass. You can't. No, right, ever. Because you got to have the fist bump emojis. Every time. Every time. Every time. Every I don't time. Let, no, I don't, let, I don't let that pass because it is disrespectful to me, and I will be offended. And when I'm offended, I take off my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just... I kind of want to see that, you know what I mean? It's sort of like, I'm, okay, I'm not. <laughs> um, so I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, I just met you recently at Makers. Yes. And um, you were amazing, by the way. And uh, you talked about grief and faith, um, which I thought was such a powerful message. Um, how did you make that decision to incorporate that part of your story in your own brand? Yeah. I mean, because I don't see myself as like six people, <laughs> you know? It's like, there's, there's one me. And as we were talking before, you know, there I show up as me all the time. You know, in that I don't leave, places. yeah, I don't, I don't leave any part of me behind. And, I, and part of the reason I do that is because, you know, in order to access all of the power and ideas and confidence and empathy and everything that it requires, to be a good human being requires that all of your experiences come with you and that you're authentic and open, right? And so for me, as I stood on the stage at Makers, um, I'd been asked what I wanted to talk about. And I often talk about empowerment and diversity. Um, I rarely talk about the personal, not because I can't or because I don't want to, but usually because the subject at hand is not about that. Uh, but when given the opportunity, I think it's really important that we see human beings as human beings. And my experiences are not just in the boardroom or in corporate offices, but they relate to having dealt with a spouse with terminal cancer. It happens that I have lost a child. You know, it happens that I am a single mother who is struggling with, you know, the balance of life. And so when I show up in my office, I want you to see that. And I want to be able to see that in other people. I don't know what your story is, right? Not you as in you, because I know you. <laughs> but when I see someone, I, I do want to understand. I want to know what happened, right? Because, and it happens with my team too, that if, if we are in a conversation, you know, and everyone's bringing their ideas and, you know, we're, having whatever debate, I want to understand what's driving the decision. You know, because that's as important as where you went to school. <laughs> more important. More, yeah, more definitely important. more important. And it makes us better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And work now is, I mean, talk about band, boundaries and TMI. I mean, we, even in the last five years, I feel like the barriers sort of around us, right? We can't, there's very little separation between our personal life, our professional life. I mean, even the growth of this conference, right? I think is in part because we, we have more confidence to be more intersectional everywhere we are and to show up with all the different parts of our identities and the parts of our life. And I think it's just gonna continue to do that. Do that. And I think that's one of the reasons that um, you know, work continues to get better. I think yeah. people's happiness and health, when we can do that and we don't have to keep putting our lives into boxes, I mean, the fact that most of you had your company pay for you to come here, mm. right, where you can actually feel like a whole person and have things you care about, but also just hear some incredible technology talks, Yeah. right? I mean, so many queer women tell me, they're like, oh, Leanne, like, the conference, you know, it's, it's more for networking. I'm like, have you seen the agenda? <laughs> It's all the tech, but that's because they're used to putting their life yeah. into boxes. Right. 
Um, so I appreciate so much of what you do in that way because I think it's harder for people who are executives, mm -hmm. who are being looked at all the time, and to see you out there. And, I mean, you're, you're miles. Are you already at status? Like, you like literally, like, <laughs> travel. You're already at status, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. That's fine. That's fine. It's cool. I'm like triple platinum girl. I'm like diamond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> but for the future badass bows in the audience, what would you say to them right now? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Um, I have been asked again and again, you know, about, well, it, it's been said, well, okay, when you finally get into the C-suite or you become a senior executive, then you can do anything you want. And that's not true. It's like, you don't just wake up one day and like, oh, okay, you know, now I'm allowed to. Because guess what? By the time you get to that point, you're so used to showing up as the fake you that you don't show up as the real you. Right. And... And the fake you or the fake person can't make empathetic decisions. Right. You know, they don't care about people. They can't make the choices between right and wrong because their whole shield is up. So they can't feel anything. A good friend of mine, Brian Grazer, said before that he's in the feelings business. So am I. You are. I'm in the feelings business. God, I want to be in the feelings business. Yeah, let's all be oh, in the feelings business. All the feels. Business. Quite frankly, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do or what role you're in, we should all be in the feelings business. It will help us be better human beings and better just kind of blew my mind right that. I'm like, we all be in the feelings business. Yeah, let's be That's in the like feelings business. It's like basically like lesbians running everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's basically, right? <laughs> We're good at that. We got that. We got that unlocked. And so I would say, you know, to the person who is starting out or starting over or doesn't like where they are in their life at the moment, whether it's because you can't be who you are at the office or in the situation, first, get out. Because wherever you are where you can't be accepted as who you are is not the place for you to be. Yeah. And any, any place where I have felt that I haven't been able to show up like this, you know, even I, I know, you know, the, you know, for the hair, you know, in any way that I want to appear, if people are uncomfortable with that, then they're uncomfortable with anything I'm going to bring. Right. And so for me, I want to make sure that if you are a young badass, <laughs> you need to be comfortable with yourself and then show up in the space, test it, to make sure that the people who are around you in that space are also comfortable with it. Because unless you're able to do that, you're not ever going to be able to show up and be in the feelings business and be great. And we all want to be in the feelings business, right? Yes, yeah. we do. So I just want to end with um, thanking you for not only showing up here today, but um, leaders like you who show up for so many things, I just cannot tell you how much it means to all of us, means what it means to the world. We see you everywhere representing our voice, mm. making it stronger. And I know that's tiring and that's a lot. And so I just want to say on behalf of 35,000 queer women, and the people love us. We really, really appreciate you showing up for us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.